startups out there, Rome's development got its start in military applications. After working on a Navy SEALs project, they discovered that, for one, they could make these exoskeletons with plastics and fabrics instead of heavy metals, for two, they could make them very powerful, and for three, they could make people run faster. After that point, they realized, hey, we got some really cool validated technology on our hands. How can we get this into the hands of the general population? The first commercial application they're starting with is skiing. And it's not just for the Olympic athlete who wants to be Iron Man on the slopes. It's actually more for the middle-aged person who wants to get their mobility a little bit closer to where it was when they were 25 or 30. The larger hope is that skiing will be a strong place for them to start commercially so that they can then expand their technology into other sectors, all while using a common technology platform. And here is Ashley Swartz with more information on how this thing works. This is the, the Gen 1 of the ski product. Um, it's an exoskeleton meant to be worn while down skiing to allow you to ski stronger and longer. So this was the one that was actually being used on skiers when you tested out that first run? Yeah, this is the um, first commercial release of the product that we launched uh, in January of this year. So it fits on the leg like this. The straps go around the thigh. Wow, that is wild looking. The knee actuator aligns with your knee, and then there's a boot clip at the bottom that connects into a ski boot. Oh. And um, the joint itself is pneumatically powered, so when this inflates, it provides extension assist. So it's like an opposite knee. <laughs> um, yeah, it helps apply strength to your quadriceps. Um, so when you're making a ski turn, it helps stabilize and add power to your leg. So that's just one part of the system, and you'd wear one on each side. And what part were you working on? Um, everything that's inside the pneumatic actuator. <laughs> and then the other component of the system is the power pack. The power pack contains um, all the pneumatic power for the system and the control and brains and electronics. So you wear this on your back while you're skiing um, and it plugs into the brace. Um, there's kind of a little retractable cable system that goes down to the brace and plugs in. And then um, you control the system through a little kind of controller that's on the shoulder strap. And you have a kind of on-off button and different power levels, depending on how much how much extra strength do you want in your in your legs while you're skiing. Um, some people like just a little bit of the boost, and some people really want help coming out of those turns. And that's kind of it. In a nutshell, it's kind of a simple system. It just provides extension assist and quadriceps strength and power. You know, as you do with those things, <laughs> which just exist everywhere. Right, yeah, right now. I know, like how exoskeletons just work. Um, <laughs> then we look at other exoskeletons that are out there that are for people that can initiate their own movement. Um, they're still trying to use traditional methods of fabrication and they're just really heavy and bulky. So the reason that we went with pneumatics is because the, the brace is under three pounds and all of the weight that is carried is carried at your core, and so it optimizes for energy use so that we're not loading you up with a ton of weight at the end of your legs and mm. um, you have to move all that distal mass. Um, so yeah, that, that's kind of one of the more unique things about this product is that it's, it's an exoskeleton that works. <laughs> it's a commercially available exoskeleton. So the pneumatic actuator functions as an air spring, so the system fills with air, and if you have your knee bent, mm -hmm. you imagine how when air fills with a cavity, it, it pushes, so it helps you push your knee back straight. So you can sit into the system, and it supports you sitting into the system mm -hmm. um, as it, you know, imagine like this is a spring essentially. 
it's just pushing against you to help support your weight. And then it also is helping step, as you go to straighten your leg, helping you straighten your leg. Extension assist, uh, flexion damping. So if I'm wearing the device, and I'm sitting into the brace and it's powered up, it's help, helping support my weight so that my quadriceps aren't working as hard. And then if I you actually are sitting on it, kind of. Yeah, so you can, you can your definitely knee. can sit into. So really what's happening is that the brace, the straps are coming around my leg and they're connected to me here. Hmm. So my system's grounded at my foot. And now this whole, the, the force coming through the joint is actually being transferred to me through my, my body here. So it's like supporting me as if I was sitting into like a chair. Yeah. Um, and then once I go to straighten my leg, it helps push my leg straight. So I'm using less of my quadriceps. I'm supposed to do it on my own because the system is helping me. And then when I say flexion damping, again, you can imagine like an air spring. If the system's pneumatic actuator is full, it's going to provide resistance as I sit into it, which is part of what's helping me sit into it. But then if I have weak quadriceps and I have a hard time lowering myself, mm -hmm. this is helping me by creating a damper. This is the Design and Engineering Center at Rome Robotics. It's all the things. It's all, all of the things. And yet somehow you reserve rooms. <laughs> which I somehow don't you can reserve spaces, not really rooms. <laughs> There's no wall. Um, yeah, so we have some, some testing spaces over here because uh, we are making wearable technology uh, kind of set up like a gym. <laughs> Slash, some of our engineers have made it into a gym. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's a gigantic. Fancy treadmill. This is the biggest treadmill I've ever seen in my life. Like, what is it for normally? Um, um, So why does it need to be so big normally? Uh, normally you have physical therapists that can sit on the side and help people move, like picking up their feet if they're like having a hard time clearing their foot. Oh. Um, and then it also just allows uh, for people to stand and get off the treadmill easier than having to immediately step down. Mm. Yeah, so that allow make it difficult for them to do so. These treadmills also come with all kinds of accessories like like the harness systems and whatnot for big training and rehabilitation. And the rest of the space is engineering and the kind of test benches and uh, prototyping space. This is our manufacturing space. This is all this is yours. Yep, all of our arms. Oh. Excess are in San Francisco. Made in the USA? Yeah, the parts are. America? Parts are fabricated elsewhere, but the whole systems are, are assembled here. This is the Rome Robotics Lab. Year one. <laughs> Did you want that not included? <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> so tell me about, because you have a really interesting background. You studied not just mechanical engineering, then you also got into medical school. Yep. And then you worked in that way before you got here. Can you tell me what you Yeah, so I specialized my degree in biomechanical engineering. Um, and then from there... As your bachelor's? As a bachelor's, yeah. And my master's is in control. Um, <laughs> really just control? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> It was the one thing I felt like I didn't learn enough about in my undergrad, was how to control robots. Like, I figured out how to design them, but not then how to turn them on. And so, <laughs> I, I learned about controlling them. Um, and yeah. you applied that. Yeah. 
<laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. Actually, yes, that degree. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, so after I, my undergrad, I moved to Chicago. I spent about seven years at the Rehabilitation Institute of Chicago, which is now called the Shirley Ryan Ability Lab. Uh, we rebranded. So I spent my time there working at the Center for Bionic Medicine, which is one of the largest research centers for orthotics and prosthetics in the country. And I designed uh, upper and lower limb prosthetic devices, as well as other rehabilitation technologies, uh, different kinds of surgical implants, different kinds of um, testing methods and rehab methods for training people to get them back to a better quality of life. Were they all mechanical or were there some electric robotic stuff involved mm -hmm. too? Yeah, so a little bit of both. Some of the prosthetic devices were purely mechanical. Um, they're super reliable, they're usually a lot more lightweight, and the harness system you use to control those provides physical proprioceptive feedback, which a lot of our EPTs like. Um, the other types of devices are considered myoelectric devices. They're controlled with an EMG signal, and those require motors and electronics and circuit boards to control. And I didn't do much of the development on those, um, besides the mechanical design, because we had a great electrical engineering team and controls team that handled that. Um, but understanding how that all works is, is still very helpful when you're designing a mechanical system. Yeah, pretty good experience. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever think that you'd be like, making an exoskeleton to help people ski? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's really fun. Um, yeah, it's a great yeah, And when did you join you? About a year ago. Uh, a year and some change. Is that right? So when I, I got hired, I was supporting the mechanical development of the ski product, and I still am doing that now. <laughs> We're getting ready to do our big production push for the second generation, so that we'll have our five uh, ski season this year. When did that start? Because we're in California now. It, yeah, it all depends on how great you know, the snow when, when the snow shows up is when it starts. But uh, some people are on the slopes around Thanksgiving. Is that around about your target Thanksgiving issue? Yes. Yeah, we will have devices. Yeah, you're telling me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> in case, in case I don't know. Uh, yeah, it is coming up. So our goal is to have commercial ready devices by that time. And I, from my clinical experience, I help fit in testing all, all the human centered design aspect of this. So, yeah. And very applicable to experience. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And Rome is developing this system as a platform technology to have other applications outside of skiing, which we're not ready to completely talk about just yet. But um, I'm pushing to develop those other applications. We're hiring at least four more mechanical engineers um, wow. that are going to be design and manufacturing engineers. And then we're hiring another handful of software engineers. Do you know, like, coming from the mechanical engineering world and like physical product development, which we both came from in the Midwest, like, it always seemed like it would be really difficult to find positions out here in Silicon Valley. <laughs> skills. Yeah. But if you want to work at Rome, that was your chance. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And this is a really cool thing. <laughs> yeah, and that's super fun. Job. Yeah, and, and as I was telling you earlier, the part of the fun is it's like your skier is bonus <laughs> because we have a ski product and people need to test it. And the more engineers that we can have trying the devices they're designing, you know, that closes that feedback loop really easily. So. 
what are the best chances for people to see this in action? Like if everything goes according to plan and people took a trip to Tahoe, might they see them on the slopes being tested out? Yes, they, they would see them on the slopes and they could test them out. That they'll be available to rent uh, on a kind of daily basis and they want to wear a ski exoskeleton and they'll be there for them. Thank you very much, Ashley. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> For more details, you can check out the full article on SolidSmack.com.